Hello, in this video, I am looking at Pearson's MyLab and Mastering. Um, we are going to look at how we can graph a logarithmic function in this program. So for this problem, um, they are asking us to describe how the graph can be obtained from the graph of a basic logarithmic function and then graph the function and state the domain and the vertical asymptote. So first, I'm looking at my function 8 minus the natural log of x. So it is going to be a reflection with that negative sign in front. And so that negative in front of the function means that we're looking at a reflection across the x-axis. So whenever we have a negative in front of our basic function, that means we're flipping it across the x-axis. And then we have this 8 here. Um, this is the same as if we had the negative natural log of x plus 8. So the fact that the 8 is in front instead of after it does not really make a difference here. If we have our basic function and we're adding a value to it, then that means that that is a vertical translation shifting it up 8 units. And so once I select all those transformations, it's time for me to look at the graph. And so with graphing transformations here in Pearson, um, I'm going to go ahead and just make this a little bigger. Um, the way we start is we can just click anywhere in the graph. And here at the bottom are our graphing tools. And so since we're working with a logarithmic function, I want to make sure that I am choosing the logarithmic tool. So here it says I have the logarithm tool. That's the correct curve for a logarithmic graph. And so I can click anywhere here in the graph. Even if I click at the very top right corner, you'll notice that it's placed the logarithm in the proper location. And so now in this transformation box, I need to make sure I'm applying the correct transformations that we just described over here. First thing you always want to make sure is that you're looking at the right base. So since in this problem we are dealing with a natural logarithm, that means that our base is E. So let me come back here. So our base is E, so I don't have to change that. Um, let's see, it was a reflection across the x-axis. So I will click that button, reflect over the x-axis. And then there was a translation up eight units. So that is a vertical shift. So here where this cursor is for vertical shift, I will move that up to eight. There we go. So I have my vertical transformation, the reflection, base E. I can check my answer and that's the correct graph. Um, for the rest of it, they're asking us for the domain. So the domain for any logarithmic function is going to be zero to infinity. If we shift it to the left or right at all, that'll affect our domain. In this case, we didn't do any horizontal shifting. We only shifted it up. So our domain will remain zero to infinity. Make sure I put that in. And then also for the vertical asymptote, it's always going to be the y-axis. And again, since we didn't shift our graph horizontally at all, then our vertical axis or our vertical asymptote is the line x equals zero. That y-axis is a vertical line at x equals zero. And that's all for that one. So I'm going to go ahead and do the next question also. Uh, let me clear all this. So again, we're going to graph this the same way. Um, here we have a logarithm that has a lot of transformations applied. So first it says we have to shift it either up or down. Um, since we have this negative six that's outside of our logarithmic function, that means it's a vertical shift down six units. And then let's see, blank units to the left or right. So here inside of our logarithmic function, so within the parentheses, we have x minus four. So that represents a shift to the right. So let me make sure, say we're going to the right and that's four units. And let's see here, we're doing either a stretch or shrink horizontally or vertically. So since our function is being multiplied by this one half on the outside, not with the x term, but on the outside of the function, that's going to be a vertical shrink since it is one half. So identifying those transformations is the most important step to start with being able to do the graph. Once I can identify those transformations correctly, then I come back here 
I choose my logarithm tool. Again, you can just click anywhere in the grid and it will place that standard logarithmic graph for you. Let's make sure we have the correct base. So since this logarithm is the common logarithm, right? We don't see natural log. We don't see any other base written. So that means for the common logarithm here, the base is 10. So if I go back to my transformation box, we already have it written as base 10. So there's nothing I have to change there. And now let's do these transformations. So we did down six. So that vertical shift is going to negative six. We see the graph moving down. There we go. Um, four units to the right, that's horizontal. So horizontally, I'm shifting it over to positive four and then shrinking it vertically. So here where we have this vertical stretch or shrink, this is where now I wanna make it one half. There we go, 0.5. And so by applying all those transformations, as we see here, the graph has been created for us. And now again, they're asking us for the domain and the vertical asymptote. So this time our graph was shifted to the right. And so that means that our domain, all of our X values, and also the asymptote have been shifted to the right. So instead of from zero to infinity, this time we'll say that the domain is from four to infinity and that our vertical asymptote is now at x equals four. So hope that helps with being able to graph these logarithmic functions in Pearson's MyLab and Mastering. Thanks so much for watching.